This is an interview with Vice Admiral Dr. George Berkeley. Uh, it's taking place at the White House in Dr. Berkeley's office on October 17, 1967. Uh, Dr. Berkeley, when did you first meet John F. Kennedy? I had the opportunity of meeting John F. Kennedy, President of the United States, approximately two months after he had appointed me uh, as physician at the White House. Uh, assistant physician to the president, as a matter of fact, was more near the designation, uh, period. During the first two months, I was not given the opportunity to meet him. However, uh, one day, as the president was leaving the elevator, I was at uh, the office, which was then occupied by Dr. Travell, and I suggested that maybe I should meet the president. She. Uh, stopped him in the corridor and I was introduced. That was my first official meeting with the President. Uh, Dr. Berkeley, how were you appointed to the White House? Well, this is rather a long story. Uh, I had been asked by the Surgeon General of the Navy to be present at Camp David on each occasion that President Eisenhower went to Camp David. This uh, period covered from 1956 until the time of uh, President Kennedy's inauguration. As a result of this, I was known by the uh, people who were connected with the President Eisenhower. And as a matter of fact, at the time of the 11 country trip, uh, Dr. Tukash, who was uh, associated with General Snyder uh, in care of President Eisenhower, was unable to go, and I accompanied them on this trip. Was it unusual that, that for uh, uh, President Eisenhower being an Army man to have a Navy doctor particularly? It was not uh, a question of uh, caring for uh, President Eisenhower exactly. Uh, Camp David being a naval, Navy installation, uh, it was felt advisable to have a Navy physician available uh, should it be indicated at any time while he was on this installation, period. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, continued, and at the time of President Kennedy's uh, inauguration, I felt that my association uh, in any way with the White House, and I might mention that I actually was not in, in direct care of President Eisenhower at any time. I was sort of a relief man or an emergency type man in that capacity. Uh, when President Kennedy uh, came to office, his first, one of his first official action was to uh, receive the two airmen who had been held prisoner by the Russians for a period of six months. Uh, he uh, met these men at uh, Andrews Air Force Base and it was felt that they would like to have me accompany him as a physician uh, at that time. Uh, when I was called uh, by the Navy aide and the former Navy aide, Captain Iran, who is now Admiral Iran, and asked to come over. I willingly complied, and knowing that I had the clearance and that made it much easier. When I arrived at the White House and uh, completed this uh, duty, I was asked by uh, the Naval aide to accept a position at the White House as a physician. I uh, said that that was very flattering and that I would be glad to do it. However, I felt that it was much easier to know a person before uh, he was appointed rather than have someone appointed and then have to uh, feel that maybe they would rather have someone else. Did so I deferred accepting this in, uh, invitation. Did you uh, know at the time who recommended you for the position? Uh, I think I was recommended. There was no uh, specific mention. I think I was most 
highly, uh, most likely recommended by uh, Cap, uh, Cap, the then Captain Rand, mm -hmm. uh, because he was one of the f one who knew me best. Really? And uh, uh, I said that I would come over daily from my duty uh, at the as commanding officer of the Navy Dispensary and uh, carry on until this uh, some decision was made. Each day for the next three days that I came over, <coughs> the same question uh, was asked, and uh, finally it was uh, Mr. O'Donnell uh, stated that uh, they would like to have it settled and that they wanted me to come to the White House, which I then did. The Navy, uh, as far as I know, had no knowledge of my appointment. I was appointed by President Kennedy uh, as a physician to him. I see. Um, did you have the opportunity to discuss with previous White House doctors operating problems that you might have in the job? Uh, I had plenty of opportunity to do this, but I had had the opportunity without direct contact due to my uh, assi uh, travels to Camp David, and it was not necessary. Both uh, General Snyder and uh, Colonel Tukar, General Snyder of the Army and Colonel T Takash of the Air Force were very uh, cooperative and helpful at any time that was indicated. Were you available to all, pers all personnel attached to the White House? The duty uh, at the White House is uh, actually restricted in one way that your only real duty is the care of the President and his family. Uh, many people who are at the White House uh, avail themselves of our presence, mm -hmm. and we are delighted to uh, help in any way. However, we do not take definitive care of any other member at the White House uh, other than uh, the President and the First Family. And that, uh, that includes both the personal physician and the assistant physician? to the president or the assistant uh, physician at the White House? Well, it includes both physicians because yes. one is the, uh, to supplement the other at any time. I see. I see. Uh, did the president, were there any, ever any unusual occasions when the president offered your services to anyone else? Yes, the president has, uh, on uh, President Kennedy, on a number of occasions, would ask me to see someone. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's uh, authorized and, and had me uh, go to uh, uh, Brazil with uh, the uh, senior uh, ambassador who had had a cerebral vascular accident and was being returned home in the President's plane. Uh, and I've seen a number of other people, including cabinet members and various members uh, of the president's staff who would ask for some specific uh, uh, check or care f uh, for the, these do, people. Do you recall uh, the ambassador's name at that time? No, I don't. He, That's fine. Right. We, can, we can check. Uh, um, um, did you find it necessary to make any changes in the dispensary when you came to the White House? The uh, area, so-called dispensary, uh, was well operated. The uh, physical plant was not too satisfactory. Uh, we did uh, secure some additional space, which uh, we uh, used for primarily for uh, physiotherapy and that type of. Uh, uh, Treatment or uh, therapy. That was for the president. Uh, president. It was uh, not necessarily, uh, uh, well, for the president. It was available to the president. Mm. Uh, and uh, that was set up on whose initiative, Doctor? It was set up on my initiative. I see. I see. Um, it was in the West Basement at that time. I see. I we see. subsequently, uh, in there, uh, redoing the swimming pool area and the small area next to the swimming pool which had some uh, gymnasium equipment, uh, we uh, established a 
area there uh, where President Kennedy uh, on a daily basis was very religious in his uh, um, physical program. Mm, I see. Um, uh, what variety of problems would you handle on, in a normal day's work? Normally, uh, you might say there were no problems. Uh, occasionally, uh, there might be a slight cold or something of that sort. You, uh, you, I'm sure you were referring to the care of the president or to general care? Well, uh, both, but primarily to the president. I am interested in both. Uh, well, uh, general care would be uh, anyone who uh, happened to be coming by our office would drop in. Uh, many of them uh, uh, came in as much to say hello as they did to uh, secure an aspirin or something of that sort. Uh, and, and as for the president? Uh, the president, uh, if, if anything were indicated, I usually saw him either up in his uh, second floor suite or uh, in the little office behind his office. Mm -hmm. uh, on occasion, he did come to the office in the West Basement, uh, but this was rather rare. Uh, altogether, how many occasions would you say that you saw him at his, uh, in his, on his, his, his room upstairs? Oh, just well, that is a, uh, that's rather difficult. That was that's more a difficult than answer. number of illnesses. Oh, well, he, the president. Uh, was rarely ill, and uh, the necessity to see him routinely uh, uh, did not was not a problem. Mm. I see. Uh, all his medical records uh, are uh, in the uh, possession of the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, which would have the uh, complete detail of any medical coverage. Surely, I see. Uh, I have no personal records uh, covering any uh, time during my co uh, my care for the president. It is my personal opinion that this those records are private and any uh, one other than members of the family using them would be invading the privacy of the individual. Um, at one time uh, there had been an attempt, uh, an attempt uh, during the campaign to uh, steal the medical records of the president. Did that present any problems for you as far as uh, this presented record. no problem to me because our records were kept in a secure place uh, and was not uh, were always uh, within the White House area where such a invasion would be practically impossible. Mm. I am familiar with the uh, problem which existed in, in uh, prior to the election, mm. uh, and that perhaps made us a little more careful with the records. We also secured the records that were in outlying uh, areas uh, which antedated his presidency and uh, included those with his uh, past medical records. I see. Did you go on all of the president's trips, Doctor? I accompanied President Kennedy on every trip that he took during the time uh, as president. I uh, was at the White House every morning at 8 or before and remained at the White House every evening, including parties uh, which might be quite late, until the President was known to be in his own quarters. Yes, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, Did you go on his, uh, his European trip also? I went on all trips. I see, yes. Um, were there uh, particular problems associated with these trips? Uh, what precautions would you have to take? Well, we had a regular uh, setup, which is 
customary in traveling with the president, which I do not care to discuss, but it was all the uh, possible angles were covered by uh, cooperation with the Secret Service in that they, we knew the areas uh, of most likely danger, and we knew uh, where uh, additional medical aid would be available and uh, things of that nature. Mm. I see. Uh, when you say personal, uh, the, this part of the subject you didn't wish to discuss, I mean, this is something personal that you... I feel that it, it uh, is uh, uh, more or less a, uh, necessary to not discuss openly just what we carry because, or what we don't carry, because uh, then becomes uh, a matter of press knowledge, and they would call up and say, do you have uh, your extra scissors with you, and that sort of thing. I see. Um, on his trip to Canada, he injured his back. Was that a ruptured disc? What was it the was not a ruptured disc. It was a, uh, I was on that trip with him, and on returning uh, from the trip, he had uh, slight, uh, some increase in his back distress, and uh, uh, having noted the manner in which he handled the uh, shovel, I uh, mentioned that I thought that that was probably the source of his increased, uh, or his back pain. Mm -hmm. It was not a disc the president had, as the records uh, clearly show, he had uh, had surgery on his back, and although his back was not uh, uh, a continuing problem and was not a constant problem, it was always a potential problem. Sure. And as therefore it was try to save him as much as possible. And uh, ir unguarded action, such as the one mentioned above at Ottawa, uh, could easily precipitate mm -hmm. uh, some distress. Was that, uh, at that time, was that primarily a, a muscular problem? Or? It was a muscular problem primarily. Was that, uh, did he have uh, acute pain at that time? Or, uh, he had uh, muscle spasm and uh, pain in the area, yes, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, was responsible for the distress he had. Uh, to what extent did that affect his uh, normal routine? It affected his normal conduction of his of the office of president in no way. Uh, uh, he uh, attended his office and uh, uh, went back and forth. Occasionally, he for one at one point he was on crutches, uh, but that did not uh, deter him from his full duty as president. I see. How long did he uh, have to continue the use of crutches? Oh, it was a question of several weeks. Uh, at that time, uh, I had attempted to secure the aid of a uh, physical medicine specialist, Dr. Hans Krauss of New York, and had uh, requested uh, contact with him from uh, Dr. Travell and she had uh, resisted uh, th doing this, and I, she was, I just said that if she did not call him personally, I would call him. Mm, I see. And uh, as, at that point, he was called, and uh, from then on, the uh, management of the president's uh, exercise and uh, program was entirely under Dr. Krauss, and Dr. Travell was instructed not to have any, uh, to attempt to uh, interfere in any way. I see. Um, were there uh, problems generally of press relations on the president's illness? Of, of press relations on the president's, uh, when he was ill? Uh, there were no particular problems other than uh, the press uh, always attempts to uh, interpret everything in regard uh, to medical health, mm -hmm. uh, medical status, mm -hmm. and uh, 
uh, about uh, shortly, uh, about four to five months after I came to the White House, the President specifically stated in the pr uh, presence of uh, another individual that I was his physician mm -hmm. and that I alone was to manage to in, to uh, take responsibility for anything that was indicated. Surely. Uh, uh, did, who did you work with on it? Uh, now, you're referring to the, the, in, in uh, the statement you just made, you're referring to treatment of the president the now and not to, uh, are you referring to relations with the press? Uh, not referring to relations with the press. Mm, I uh, I had never uh, had any direct relations with the press I because I felt that uh, any any information that was of significance would be given to the press through the channels of the press secretary, and uh, many times they uh, attempted to contact me directly. I. Uh, enjoy the press and have a great respect for them. However, I felt that uh, it is only just that any report on the condition of the president should be given through a definite channel and not from hearsay from here to there and asking various questions. Uh, and who were you usually working with on that? Did you work with uh, Pierre Salinger? I worked with the existing press secretary, but however, uh, all uh, reports were always uh, made known to the president before any uh, expression was given. Surely. And he, the president, I may mention, had no objection to anything that was pertinent being given to the press. Mm -hmm. There's one other thing I might mention, that on many occasions when the press uh, made notation that President Kennedy seemed tired and uh, his back must be bothering, the actual fact was that the press was tired from trying to keep up with him. This was particularly uh, of, of note on uh, one occasion when we were on the, uh, an airplane carrier off the uh, west coast and uh, uh, the president walked up to the level on the tower on the airplane carrier I think at least five times when the elevator was right next to the area uh, the steps mm. and had no difficulty. However, the press reported that he was having trouble with his back. And the actual course was that they were getting tired and and uh, uh, tried to interpret the entire their feelings in regard to the president because mm. they thought he should be tired. Um, the president was a firm believer in the patient choosing his own doctor. Did he consult with you on having other doctors treat him? The president never had any doctor treat him except with my cognizance and I, uh, he never requested uh, that he have, that I have anyone see him, uh, any additional physicians who saw him were at my mm. instigation. I see. Under what circumstances uh, would other doctors be called in? Well, if uh, there were any uh, indication that he had a, a a respiratory infection, for instance, mm -hmm. I would ask uh, a nose and throat man to see him. In this instance, it happened to be Dr. Wen uh, G. W. Taylor, Captain of the United States Navy, mm -hmm. uh, and had seen him in, uh, when he would have anything of this nature. Was uh, did Paul, uh, Dr. Paul DeGara see him at all? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, for a second. Uh, Dr. DeGara, uh, at one point there's a question of uh, some allergy to dust. Uh, some of the nose and throat problems we had we felt were on an allergic basis. Uh, we, as you know, uh, President and Mrs. Kennedy were very fond of dogs and horses. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we felt that there's a possibility of there being an allergy. Dr. DeGara is one of the foremost allergists and uh, it was known to some of the members of the group and uh, I contacted him and asked him to come down. Uh, he made various tests 
and uh, those reports are also in the complete medical record. Uh, we collected all the dust from the second floor and he had it analyzed and uh, things of that nature. Mm. Uh, were you able to, uh, subsequently, were you able to control that allergy pretty well? Yes, the president uh, was able to control both by avoiding and by giving antihistamines, uh, was able to control mm. the problem very satisfactorily. Mm. I see. Uh, was he, uh, how frequently did he use antihistamines? How frequently did he use antihistamines, generally? Oh, not, now that's the sort of thing. See, you're getting into uh, the medical record, and uh, the, I feel that uh, all the records uh, of his medical care will be made available at such time as uh, is indicated. I feel that and there were, the use of antihistamine would be perhaps, uh, since you just mentioned, once in two or three months uh, for perhaps not more than a day. I see. Uh, was there a clear understanding of the relationship between your responsibility and other doctors who treated President Kennedy? I think At really the time answered. of Dr. President Kennedy's statement that I was his physician and I alone was to prescribe for him, from that time on there was little interference from anyone. However, on one or two occasions, uh, Dr. Travell uh, uh, attempted to uh, uh, enter into the picture and uh, I informed her that she was not to uh, attempt to give any injections or anything of that nature, mm. as it had been clearly stated that this would be under my jurisdiction and I would, if indicated, have Dr. Krauss make any recommendations. Surely. Uh, did you ever ha uh, have any reservations about other treatments that the President received? The President received no other uh, treatments that uh, were not uh, authorized or indicated uh, by me or by someone that I had asked to see him. Um, uh, were you involved in the 50 mile hike, Doctor? I was uh, involved in that. I uh, was in uh, Palm Beach at the time and I uh, set up uh, a uh, medical coverage and had one of my uh, helpers, Chief uh, Mills, accompany the uh, uh, station in the station wagon uh, with the group who were going. I had no uh, medical care of the group who were there. Mm. Uh, period. You can turn that off a second. You Um, when you became the president's personal physician and reviewed his medical history, do you remember what your first impressions were? <coughs> there again, <coughs> I uh, was approximately three or four months before I had complete access to his, medi to his uh, medical history. Uh, however, I uh, had the uh, help of the of the physician who had taken care of him for a number of years uh, and knew his medical record uh, and uh, found no great discrepancies uh, in the things that we wanted to cover. Mm. Did, um, was that Dr. Jordan? No, Dr. Jordan was not in direct care of him. Uh, doc I have spoken to Dr. Jordan on several occasions mm. and uh, but at the time that I knew him, uh, she was not in the active picture, although we spoke to her uh, in her office. And one of the men who had been trained by her uh, uh, from Boston mm. uh, was, uh, we contacted on various occasions. Mm. Can, can you mention his name? I have to get, uh, hold up, so. Surely. And Dr. Russell Bowles from Boston, uh, who had been trained under uh, Dr. Uh, Jordan. 
wore a brace. He wore uh, what Harley called a brace. It was a canvas uh, uh, lower abdominal belt, mm -hmm. a very light material, and uh, it uh, had no uh, actual stays. It just had a thickening in uh, various portions uh, where there were double or triple the uh, number. They were not uh, metal stays or bone stays or anything of the sort. It was, uh, you could hardly call it a brace. Mm -hmm. It was uh, just a, a small uh, support rather than any actual brace. Yes. Um. Uh, what did, um, after his trip to Canada, the president, as you mentioned, began uh, working with Dr. Krauss. What was it, the, the therapy to consist of? Was that mainly of exercises that he was taking? The therapy was practically 100% uh, of exercise. It was a, uh, a progressive buildup of exercises. There were uh, minimal of any medication given. I would say that uh, in the period after uh, Dr. Krauss entered the picture that uh, the use of the so-called procaine injections was uh, limited to approximately three times and only uh, two, um, one injection uh, at that time. Mm. It was definitely felt that they were not helpful and were actually uh, harmful, or uh, actually not beneficial in that uh, after an injection the uh, exercise should be curtailed and gradually built up again and that would really set him back rather than increase the, uh, if he had a definite so-called muscle spasm it was treated uh, by uh, massage and uh, other means and on one or two occasions uh, and a procaine injection was given but only under the direction of Dr. Krauss. Mm. Uh, there one finding that the Warren Commission made there again the question of uh, adrenal insufficiency uh, it was never a problem with the president. Uh, you mean after he became president? At, when, uh, under my care, and that's one reason uh, I, I was given complete uh, charge of his, of his medical supervision. And he, as far as the president was concerned, he had no uh, problem in concern to this. Now that uh, is a touchy problem. To me, that the press and um, and various other people try to interpret every action of the president in light of his medical uh, condition. I may state here that President Kennedy was a essentially normal, healthy male who uh, had all the vigor and uh, vitality and much more so than the average male. None of his activities were curtailed, curtailed in any way by his physical well-being. And he at no time, during the time that I had supervision of his uh, medical life, uh, had to curtail any activity because of medical problem. Mm, I see. And I considered the president essentially a healthy adult. I see. Um, what sports could he partake in with? Uh, well, uh, his sports uh, were uh, somewhat limited in that it was diverted into actual exercise program. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, he loved to sail, which he did extensively when he was in Hyannis and uh, on the trip up to Maine. Uh, he 
enjoyed golf. He did not in, uh, participate in it to a great extent uh, because of uh, uh, the, uh, his other activities and also that in uh, the swinging of a golf club you cannot completely control your uh, motions mm -hmm. and uh, the danger of some uh, adverse turn might uh, precipitate something that we didn't want to mm -hmm. have precipitated. I see. There was a story that the president was an insomniac. What kind of a sleeper was he in your opinion? The president slept well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where a story of that that's, uh, nature would uh, uh, arise. Mm -hmm. Uh, doctor, were the events surrounding the assassination in Dallas, as they were narrated uh, in the Manchester book, accurate in your estimation? I have never read the Manchester book. Uh, I, uh, I have been interviewed by Manchester, uh, and I have been told that I am quoted in the book. However, I have never read any section of the book. Mm. I do not possess one. I see. Uh, so, uh, uh, whatever knowledge you may have of anything that's in the book, you, you don't have any it's, it's secondary. disagreement. Uh, uh, I have no agreement or disagreement because I don't know what he said. I see. Uh, did you view the x-rays that were made of the president or autopsy photos? Uh, we might mention something about the assassination here, which will clear the record to, I think, to a great degree. When we were in Fort Worth, uh, Mrs. Lincoln and I were in the second car in the motorcade. When we arrived in Dallas, the president got off one end of the plane and Mr. Lincoln and I got off the other end of the plane and when we got to the bottom of the stair, the motorcade was already in motion and uh, I com complained to the Secret Service that I should be either in the follow-up car or the, or the uh, lead car. Who did you speak to? members of Secret Service, and uh, uh, they uh, said that it couldn't be arranged, that uh, the politicians had gotten in that group of cars, that everyone wanted to be in, in those cars, and it was so forth, and also the motorcade was in action. We therefore were put in a so-called VIP vehicle. Uh, when the assassination occurred, I got to the scene by securing a car through one of the Secret Service, Andrew Berger, and an escort of a policeman. I was there probably within three to five minutes of the time the President arrived. I went immediately in to see the President and uh, went to the uh, table in which he was being treated and immediately saw that uh, for all intents and purposes, life did not exist or could not be sustained. Mm. I, I talked to the doctors who were uh, busily engaged in doing what uh, was indicated and would have been indicated had there been any hope of, of salvation of the president. I gave them some uh, hydrocortisone uh, to put in the uh, intravenous which was being given and also uh, told him his blood type. Mm. There, from, there was no need for anything in my estimation, but uh, they were correct in doing all possible procedures. Mm. I then contacted Mrs. Kennedy, who was sitting outside, and uh, that is a record. Uh, and from then on, that was my interest. Uh, where, 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 where? Uh, uh, when the president was on the 
Air Force One returning to Washington, uh, Mrs. Kennedy, as, as has been noted, sat in the uh, rear of the plane next to the coffin bearing the President's uh, remains. Uh, during the flight, I contacted her and stated that an autopsy would be necessary and that I was perfectly willing to arrange to have it done at any place that she uh, felt that should be done. She said, well, it doesn't have to be done. I said, yes, it is mandatory that we have an autopsy. I can do it at the Army Hospital at, at Walter Reed or the Navy Hospital at uh, Bethesda or any civilian hospital that you would designate. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I felt that it should be a military hospital in that he was President of the United States, had been President of the United States and was uh, therefore the uh, Commander-in-Chief of the military. Mm -hmm. uh, after some consideration, she stated that she would like to have the uh, President taken to Bethesda. Mm -hmm. This was arranged by telephone from the plane and it was accomplished. I uh, accompanied the president in the uh, ambulance to going to Bethesda and also accompanied him to the area where the autopsy was performed. And during the course of the autopsy, I supervised everything that was done and uh, uh, you mentioned that you supervised the autopsy. I supervised the autopsy and kept in constant contact with uh, Mrs. Kennedy and the members of her party who were on the 17th floor in the suite at that level. Mm -hmm. uh, I made trips back and forth. I uh, delivered to her personally the uh, ring from the president's finger and uh, uh, talked to her on a number of occasions. I also uh, directed that the x-rays be taken for uh, future reference and had uh, complete knowledge of everything that was done. The records uh, are also uh, in the possession of a member of the family. I see. There were, there were uh, photographs taken also at that time. Within there were photographs taken. Uh, uh, at various stages, and they are also in the possession of the family, uh, and uh, uh, the only regret I have that I did not ask to have a photograph taken when he had been restored to uh, his near normal appearance, and uh, I may mention here that uh, uh, it was, he uh, was very lifelike in his appearance, and there would have been no question of his having been viewed. I see. Um, Manchester Book mentioned that you were concerned, uh, there was concern that the uh, environment was taking so long. Uh, were, were there particular problems that... Uh, the by virtue of the completeness of the examination, the post-mortem uh, uh, took considerable time because there was a desire not to miss anything uh, uh, for future reference. And how, how long did it take? Uh, the, that part is, would have to be a record from elsewhere because I was uh, involved in so many things. It took in, in practically the entire night and uh, the embalming was done uh, very carefully and the reconstruction of the area uh, which had been uh, involved in the gunshot wound of the head had to be cared for in a very professional manner. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't give the exact timing on that, sure. uh, but it was considering the uh, job that was being done, uh, it was uh, not excessive. I see. I understand. Uh, 
Do your, do, uh, your conclusions differ at all with the Warren report as the circumstances are cause of death? My uh, conclusion in regard to the cause of death was the uh, bullet wound which involved the skull. Mm. Uh, the discussion as to whether the, uh, a previous bullet uh, also enters into it, but as far as the cause of death, uh, mm. the, uh, the immediate cause was unquestionably the bullet which uh, shattered the uh, brain and the mm. calvarium. I see. The brain and the what, Doctor? And the skull. Yes. Calvarium. I see. Um, Did you, uh, do you agree with the, the Warren report on the number of uh, bullets that entered the president's body? I would not uh, care to be quoted on that. I see. Uh, under the best circumstances, uh, would it have been possible to save life to the president if all indicated medical procedures had been carried out successfully? It is uh, unquestionably, in my opinion, that the president could not have survived under any circumstances, and regardless of who or how many uh, uh, procedures were available or what equipment was available. When I examined him, as I stated earlier, uh, he was essentially uh, uh, no longer living. He, there may have been uh, some uh, cardiac action, but uh, that was it. Pardon me a second. Uh, Physicians at the hospital in Dallas uh, were completely justified and were uh, performing as any group of competent physicians should do in that until it is unquestionable that life does not exist, all efforts should be made to sustain life mm -hmm. or to improve the condition. I see. So, in, in your opinion, the speed or availability of medical help was not a significant factor in the presence? Uh, in this instance, it uh, was not. Hmm. However, I feel uh, very keenly and uh, that the physician should have complete access and availability to the president at all times. Hmm. As, uh, has, has the uh, uh, has there been any change in the uh, in the setup whereby it would it would now uh, happen that the president I mean excuse me the uh, personal physician the president would always be available up front the personal physician to the president is now always either in the follow-up car with the Secret Service or in the car immediately following this vehicle so at no time uh, has he been further back mm. than that? So it would it would not now be possible for that situation to occur again. Is that your understanding? Uh, it it would not be possible, uh, as far as I am concerned. I simply would not ride anywhere else. Yes. Um, were you able to uh, convey strongly to the Secret Service at the time that you felt that they were making a, a mistake? when they, you were assigned to another vehicle? I, uh, as probably Mrs. Lincoln has mentioned in her uh, recording, uh, this was brought to their attention very strongly at the foot of the uh, stairway from the airplane. Mm -hmm. However, I do not feel that although uh, at that time, uh, with the existing regulation, that it could have been different mm -hmm. as far as they were concerned because the people who wanted to get in those cars was uh, such that, uh, and that they overruled other people and yes. simply crawled into them. I see. Uh, I don't feel they could have just said, well, this is a doctor's car. 
but it had not been established to that extent at I that see. time. I see. We, uh, Mrs. Lincoln and I discussed on numerous occasions that there should be a car, and the reason I mentioned Mrs. Lincoln, because she, uh, from the stenographic and from secretarial standpoint, was many times uh, needed. Mm -hmm. And we attempted to r ride in the car uh, immediately behind the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. uh, this would not occur again, I'm sure, because I would simply crawl into the hospital, mm -hmm. the car behind it, if it was the King of Siam. I wouldn't ride anywhere else. Yes. Um, doctor, were the doctors uh, in Dallas uh, familiar with the, the uh, illnesses that the president had? The, they the, the doctors in Dallas would have no reason to have any knowledge of that, and they had no need to have any knowledge of that because the question was one of assassination by gunshot, and his previous history, other than the fact that I gave them the uh, neocortef to put in the uh, solution, which also would be used in anyone uh, possibly who had such a wound mm. to uh, give them su additional support. I see. But as far as any knowledge that need, uh, there have any previous knowledge that was not indicated, mm. and therefore, in addition to that, uh, the inquiries concerning uh, the medical background of the president by people who were dealing with the Warren Commission and the assassination are absolutely unfounded because they had nothing to do with the assassination. I see. Th they did uh, make an attempt to find out, uh, though, did they not? They had no time to find out. I oh. told them. They didn't. Uh, I went in and told them uh, that this I wanted to put in the uh, intravenous that was being given. Surely. And they, were, they had no, they made no questions at all. There's a statement in one of them that one of them thought to do this, but that is not true, because I was the one who came in and gave it to them. And the doctors in Dallas never even mentioned that I was present, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter to me, because I saw no, there was no reason to, to uh, interject myself in the procedure, which uh, at that time was hopeless, in addition, uh, I was not part of their team and sure. would have interfered. Um, did, did they at that time attempt to do a post-mortem on the president uh, to learn about these things? They had uh, not to learn once, about once, these things. No, excuse me. Once it became apparent that the president was, no, was beyond uh, uh, hope as far as... And there was well, nobody no time. When, when the president was uh, there again, uh, I stood with Mrs. Kennedy, and uh, the, one of the doctors came and said that uh, they uh, felt that he was, the president was dead. Mm -hmm. I went over and checked him myself, and I pronounced him dead. Surely. There again is not entered in into any of the Dallas people, and I came back to Mrs. Kennedy and said, the president is dead. Mm -hmm. And we went over to her, uh, to the president, and... Uh, uh, we said the prayers for the dead and various other things which have been recorded elsewhere, sure. I believe. Uh, did, did the doctors there at that time then attempt to perform a post-mortem? Uh, the coroner attempted to uh, have the body retained there for uh, a post-mortem. Mm -hmm. uh, and investigation of the uh, assassination. Mm. Uh, that is, uh, was perfectly understandable in that uh, this condition existed. However, the people involved were not just anyone. It was the President of the United States. Mrs. Kennedy was going to stay just where she was until uh, and travel with the president at any time. It was felt uh, advisable to return to the Washington area as soon as possible because of the uh, uncertainty as to what else was happening in Dallas. Mm. Did any of the doctors there attempt to begin uh, postmodern procedures? Mm, of course not. For first place, uh, uh, postmodern would have to be either um, authorized by a member of the family or ordered by the court.
I said this was not uh, normally a, a procedure that they would uh, automatically perform. In no way. No. I see. I see. Uh, do you have any other uh, remarks that you wish to make about events in Dallas? Or the return trip, or the funeral, or? Uh, no, I... Uh, I'm sure that this is all made uh, note of by other sources. It was very uh, uh, turn it off for a second. It's needless to say that all the members of President Kennedy's uh, so-called official family were emotionally involved and practically devastated by the assassination. The same is true in my case. And uh, yeah, I have nothing further to oh. Oh. The Warren report uh, definitely stated that one thing that should be seen to, and that was that the doctor was in a position in the motorcade and available to the president at all time. Uh, had this been as authoritative as stated uh, prior to uh, the assassination, I think the problem would not have existed as far as our positioning in the motorcade. Uh, however, this was never clear, and it was always a, uh, a argument as to where we would get uh, in the motorcade. Most of the time, however, I was within uh, one or two cars of the president. This was one of the few times that this did not occur. The only other time it occurred to my direct uh, recollection is when we were in Rome and we were uh, in the VIP bus and actually at that time the VIP bus practically got lost and we never uh, did get to the Quirinal uh, Castle. We went direct to our hotel. Uh, however, uh, now this will not exist, and uh, I hope in the future that uh, any subsequent physicians who presidents will have no such problem. Uh, was it the Secret Service who was primarily responsible for assigning you your seat in the motorcade in, on any given occasion? Uh, uh, I would not state that they were uh, responsible. The uh, assignment of cars usually came from uh, one of the, uh, would that have been Kenneth O'Donnell, you ordinarily? Would have used? Not, not necessarily, it would have been the local uh, uh, political representative who was uh, arranging this particular oh, trip. And, uh, but had it been established that our position was to be in that area, it would have then been directly the responsibility of the Secret Service, uh, and it is now such. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. Right. Uh, did I ask you what your relationship to Dr. Travell was, Doctor? I'm not sure. I, uh, I was asked to come to the White House by Ken O'Donnell to be uh, part of the White House medical setup. I was not asked to be Dr. Travell's assistant. Uh, however, our uh, arrangements were very amicable, and uh, uh, we had at no time had any uh, actual disagreement other than it was uh, felt that uh, my management of the president's health uh, was more uh, general and not as uh, limited to the use of the procaine injections, which uh, uh, Dr. Chavell advocated at all times. I see. Uh, 
uh, and uh, President Kennedy has stated previously specifically said that I was his physician. Uh, this was approximately uh, in October or uh, September of 1941. 1961. Uh, and uh, uh, no uh, other notification was given and to, uh, uh, several a year or so later it appeared in the uh, congressional record mm. although I had been functioning as a physician to the president uh, for many months prior oh, to right. that. Uh, for some peculiar reason I don't think the New York Times announced your appointment as personal physician until I think it was in June of '63, actually. Well, was, all this uh, announcement was made after they noted in the congressional record that uh, I, uh, my name appeared in that position. Oh yes. No one had. I had made no statement or made no attempt to have anything changed. Well, thank you very much, Doctor.